It's been a while since I've made characters into humans, so here we are! <laughs> I have actually designed Tamagotchi characters into humans before. Actually, it was supposed to be my very first video on this channel, but the idea was thrown out because I didn't like any of my designs. So I decided that instead of completely giving up on that idea, I'm going to go into the boxing ring again and beat this prop to the ground! <laughs> this time, instead of humans, I'm going to turn them into magical girls. Chichi was the first Tamagotchi I wanted to design because I thought the swirls as the ears were so cute! But the actual character doesn't have a lot to them? All the wiki said is that they like to play, they're loyal, and they like chew toys. So they're just a dog. They're just a silly little guy. They're literally just there for good vibes and head pats. And although they're so so cute, this unfortunately led to a very rough start. In my first sketch, I didn't like anything about it. I didn't like the face, I didn't like the leggings, I didn't like the silhouette, I didn't like the shorts, but at the same time, I also didn't want to give her a skirt because I didn't feel like it suited the silhouette. So I basically put myself in between a rock and a hard place. After sobbing for like two days straight, I ended up restarting. The character itself is actually very simple. It just has puffiness around their neck, a red nose, and swirls to replicate their ears and tails. Keeping this in mind, I wanted to focus on these elements to keep it similar to the actual Tamagotchi. I eventually landed on a dog clown aesthetic for this magical girl because the red nose looked like a red clown nose to me. Is that obvious and truthfully a little overdone? Maybe. But you know what they say, if it isn't broken, don't fix it. For the most part, I just gave her a leotard that has the same puffy neckline and shoulders as a classic clown. I also wanted to give her two very long braids to mimic her ear swirls, but also just because I love watching the way braids and pigtails are used in fighting animation. It's so cool. I also gave her fluffy dog shoes and gloves because I wanted to bring back the dog look without giving her actual dog ears. After making this design, I ended up showing a few of my art friends to ask for advice on the design, and then I made a third design that was just altered to their advice. Boom! Design one, draft one, complete! <laughs> the next design I made was Melochi? Melodichi? Melochi? Melodichi? Uh, I don't know. While with Chichi, I had little to work with, with Melodichi, I had too much to work with. Melody has not one, not two, but four outfit variants. Four outfit variants! Holy f dude! That's a lot to work with! Outfit-wise, I didn't know which outfit I wanted to base the design off of, so I ended up just taking shorts and the dress and combining it to make whatever this two-part outfit is. I made sure to keep her eyelashes relatively the same to the original design and her cat hat turned into a cat ears and a swoopy bangs to mimic her hat rim. Color wise, all I did was take her original palette and mess around with it to my liking. I feel like you could definitely see that I wasn't completely sure what I was doing in this first design. In some areas, I have heart shapes, others I have music notes, and in some parts, I have teardrops. I, I wasn't sure what theme to go with, and I also wasn't sure if I should focus on her cat aesthetic to begin with, and before I knew it. I was getting overwhelmed, <laughs> so I took a step back. <laughs> Doing this helped me realize that I really wanted to focus on three general themes, her interest in violin, cats, and tear shapes. So I ended up taking the original skirt idea and cut it in half to give off a orchestra conductor vibe. I also made sure that her left shoulder didn't have any fabric on it to show that's kind of like where the violin goes and made her glove fingerless to mimic violin gloves. Boom! Here's the first draft. I'm not sure how I feel about the heart clip, but it's fine. We have time to alter it later. Next up is Candy Paku Paku. Out of the three designs, this was the easiest for me because she's an idol, and if I haven't made it any obvious yet, I love idol characters. I wanted her to be the most traditional magical girl. She has the classic big shoulders, puffy big skirt silhouette with the cutesy and soft bow aesthetic. 
I think on top of this, I also just had a simpler time with this because I already knew what I had to do to make the design work well with the other two designs. She has to have her general shape on the centerpiece of her dress three times, she needs to have some sort of gloves, and she can't have bare legs or thigh highs because that's what the other two have. The only thing I really wanted to play with was her hair. My problem at hand is that I wanted to incorporate the candy bow, but I also wanted her hair to have a very similar shape to lop bunny ears because the other two girls have animal motifs and the hair of the actual Tamagotchi kind of looks like bunny ears to me. BAM! Here's the draft I landed on. In this section, I set the characters next to each other to see how they would look as a group, and then I edited the designs from there. Since I don't have much to say here on out, I wanted to talk about the actual characters. At first, these designs were just used for me to get out of art blocks since I've been having a lot of trouble posting and just creating art the last few months. I thought creating these characters would be a perfect way to just turn off my brain and do nothing but draw. And for the most part, they did their job, but I didn't realize that as I kept going with these characters, I kept thinking more about their life and them as actual people. Does that make sense? As I was drawing them, they, they spouted a life of their own, and I just wanted to share some of my ideas. Firstly, I was very much struggling with the idea of how do these characters transform? I didn't really want to go like the crystal gem route or like uh, like soul gems type thing. No, I didn't, I didn't really like that vibe. Uh, so I was talking to my best friend Adeline about it and she said, Most magical girls have an item they use to trigger their transformation, right? Like compacts and wands and things like that. So what if these girlies use Tamagotchis to transform? Yes! Yes, Adeline, yes! That was such a good idea! Oh my god, she's so big brain! <laughs> In this world, they actually have Tamagotchis. Like, the Tamagotchis that they're based off of are an actual thing. Does that make sense? And maybe this is like set in the world where it's like the 2000s where Tamagotchis are just getting big, everyone's getting them, and maybe, I don't know why, but some of them are magical obviously because they're turning into magical girls, so there's definitely something going on there. I just haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> And for clarification, when I say there's Tamagotchis in their world, I don't mean it in like a Pokemon way, where like there's just little Tamagotchi characters running around. I mean like they have the actual like the, the toy, you know what I mean? And however they end up becoming magical girls through this toy, I know for a fact that the toy becomes like a symbol on their character design. So for these three girls, it's the little circle in the bow. I'm not sure if it's going to be like, that's that's just how it is. Like every magical girl has a bow on them that has the circle on it. Or I don't know if like each team has like a specific theme or something. I'm just not completely sure yet, but I do know for a fact that each character will have a little actual Tamagotchi on them, if that makes sense. So um, like in civilian form, their Tamagotchis just look like normal Tamagotchis, but when they turn into magical girls, they like they're colored in, like they're in disguise for the actual design. Does that make sense? Since I don't have names for these girls yet, I will leave it to you guys to name them down below. But for now, I will just call them by their Tamagotchi name. When it comes to Chit, I knew that I wanted her backstory to center around the idea of having a dog that passed. And now that the dog has passed, she feels a lot of guilt for not loving and embracing the dog as much as she should have. I doubt that the character mistreated her dog because I just don't want to write about that. But. I would say that it's kind of a situation where she would constantly push the dog away. So because of the struggle of feeling like she didn't do enough for her dog, she ended up getting a dog-based power. And I also think that the clown idea also makes sense because clowns are known for making people happy and her wish is connected to happiness and how she feels like she didn't make her dog happy when her dog was alive. Dynamics wise, I really like the idea that she is similar to Cat Noir, except for 
replace the flirtatiousness with just general playfulness. In my head, she kind of moves around like Spinel from uh, Steven Universe Future, I believe it's called. Just constantly jumping, constantly doing something, constantly moving around. I also just really like the idea of Chit having just like this silly, like, like laughable weapon because I really want her to seem haha funny character. You know what I mean? But I don't want her to be that. I want her to seem like that from the outside, but she's actually very smart. And I'd imagine that she does a lot of the planning and strategizing when it comes to the actual team. However, I could say that I'd imagine that her plans don't completely make sense. Sometimes she says things that you're just like, huh? But like maybe 95% of the time, it works. <laughs> When it comes to Melody, despite the fact that I know she's going to be the protagonist, I have not a single idea. I know that Melody really wants to play the violin, and I imagine maybe she wants to play in an orchestra or something like that, but I don't know what exactly is stopping her. I've thought about maybe just having it so that it's financial issues, or even that she is scared that if she goes and plays the violin, she won't have a lot of money but i feel like both of these ideas are kind of like cliche i guess and there's nothing wrong with cliches i just don't prefer them or at least i like the idea of redirecting the cliches into something more original but despite this, I do like the idea that she ends up finding the Tamagotchi. I don't think she ends up buying one. I imagine that she just finds it on the sidewalk or something. Weapon-wise, I know that I really like the idea that she has something very elegant. I really like the idea of her body language being very carefree despite the fact that she is a very stoic person. This has led me to kind of like the idea that she has one of those weapons that's like a chain and then like a blade at the end. When it comes to her spot in the team, she of course is the team leader, but I doubt that it's in a way where it's like, oh, I think you should do this. I say what goes, you know, I think it's more so of like she keeps the team together. She is the glue of the team. Without her, the team wouldn't function. Let's talk about Candy. As mentioned before, I'd imagine that she is a very energetic character, but she is not very realistic. I'd imagine that she's very fantastical. Her head is in the clouds at all times. And I like to believe that this is why her shoes are like not very realistic. Wish-wise, I am also not very sure. Uh, I, I kind of like the idea that she wants to be an idol, that is her goal, that is her ambition, that is her drive, but she is definitely afraid. I'm not sure why. Uh, something in me is saying that she is probably insecure about something. I don't know if it's something physical or if it's something like emotional, but either way, I know that she is scared that the people around her won't be as sweet as she wishes they would be. But something in me is also saying that she is recently recovering from a codependent relationship. I'd imagine that it's very toxic on her side. I'd imagine that since she is so very insecure, she's constantly looking for reassurance in her partner. And I'm not here to say that asking for reassurance is a bad thing, because it's not. But I imagine that the way she was doing it, it kind of made her girlfriend feel like her life was relying on the girlfriend. Does that make sense? And that's not a good position to be in. That is very stressful. And eventually it did make them grow apart. Following this train of thought, I'd imagine that she ended up getting the Tamagotchi because she realized that what she was doing was not the best for either of them. Uh, so instead she decided to get a Tamagotchi and take care of this Tamagotchi whenever she felt like texting her ex. When it comes to her role in the group, Candy definitely focuses on the social aspect. She focuses on protecting civilians and is constantly trying to get better and improve in life. When it comes to her weapon, I also am not very sure. <laughs> I've considered the possibility of just not giving her a weapon to begin with and instead giving her a shield to represent the fact that she is tired of hurting people and how she generally wants to be better and shield others from pain and misery. But that's just what I have for right now. Those, those are my girls. I hope you like them. <laughs>
if you have any criticism or advice to make my drawings better or my videos better, please let me know down below. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like, and if you didn't, give it a dislike. It's up to you. And as always, stay safe, eat good snacks, sleep well, and of course, don't die. See you later.